this um, regular board meeting to order, we please stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I do have one item I'd like to add to the agenda. It'll be uh, Roman numeral two, um, which will be a public hearing for the budget. For the TVF extension. TVF extension, sorry. And with that, I will ask for a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Seconded. Been moved and seconded to approve the agenda with the update. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, moving on. Um, let me find my paper. We'll move on to hearing from visitors. Do we have any visitors that want to speak? No, nobody. Anybody online, Blake? Nobody online. Then I'm not going to read that. We'll skip that. All right, moving on. Student rep reports. Kushimi, the only one that showed up. Thank you. All right. Man, we are blowing through this. Uh, moving to consent items. I'll make a motion to approve the revised consent items as presented. Wait here a second. You second, Anton? Yes, okay. It's been moved. Oh. It's been moved and saying to approve consent items. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign. Motion carries. Oh, yeah. I got to open them. Yes. Do I have a. Don't I have. Do I just open it? Yes. I don't have any literature to tell me. Um, we're going to go back to the public hearing and we'll open the public hearing for comment, right? And there must be no comment. Now do I close the public hearing? So we just have to have the opportunity for if anyone has any questions or comments about the TBS budget extension, if there is none. Okay. Thank you. Well, then I will close the public hearing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the correction. Now we'll move on to action items. First up is the AmeriCorps program agreement. <clears throat> and that's Mr. Denny. You get the hot seat. So this is part of a grant from Paul Klein, who works at um, United Way out of Tri-Cities. Um, they uh, support about a dozen schools um, to help reduce chronic absenteeism. So we receive at no cost to us other than finding, finding a place for them to perform their duties and the training that we would do at the beginning of the school year. Um, this person at no cost to us to support all of our students that are um, in that chronic absenteeism. Now we don't she doesn't have enough availability or the, the physician doesn't have enough availability to address all. So they work on a caseload. Um, they provide tier one, which is school wide, tier two, which is small group and tier three, which is individual supports for our students. Um, and so I was just pulling up the, the report and we have significantly less from last year. So to be able to come in and say that this position has an impact, there is an impact, but I can't quantify it because we were out with all the COVID last year and that this year we didn't have near as many. So um, we do have less students. Um, the impact though is more of a, a qualitative than a quantitative. The relationships built with students that are struggling, the connections that she provides with other service providers. Uh, goes down the hall to the community and schools office, say hey, this kid doesn't have an alarm clock. Can we get an alarm clock for him? Yep. So trying to remove the barriers to students being able to be at school uh, more frequently than, than what they have before. So um, uh, United Way comes out um, three times a year. I meet with them three times a year. They do a program analysis. All the training is through United Way. Um, they have uh, bi-monthly meetings where they can meet with other service providers. 
um, where they're able to get ideas of, of different activities and things to implement with our students. Um, the first year, we weren't really sure how to use that position. This last year, um, we were able to dial it in a little bit better. Um, and so not only was the person working individually, but partnered with Lupe Maldonado from the migrant program um, and Laura Hermosillo in the community and schools. And they actually created a much stronger group um, working as a, as a triad than, than single. So we're getting better every year. We're serving more students with it every year. Um, they do ask for a contract agreement. Um, you guys have seen that, but um, there's no cost to us other than, like I said, the um, supervision when I meet with them once a month, um, a place to work, and then any trains that we do throughout the year. Very good, thank you. I'll make a motion then to approve the AmeriCorps program agreement as presented. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded to approve the AmeriCorps program agreement. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. I oppose, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, thank you Michael. Okay, next item is um this is unrepres unrepresented employee athletic director recommendation for hire well board i'd like to introduce our recommendation to hire here it's here with us this evening um through the last week and multiple interviews and hours and reference checks i'd like to introduce to you jackson and his family. I have a wife back there, a little girl, and a baby boy, and a father. Um, so we got the whole family, uh, or grandpa, whichever or a title you'd like to hold. <laughs> Grandpa's a good one. Um, and so, um, Selena, do you have? Oh, goodness. So, um, so this is why you have a really good administrative assistant. So here you have your official crosser backpack and your lanyard. And we want to shake your hand and welcome you aboard. And the board may have questions that they'd like to ask you, but we'd like you to. With that, do you have any questions, comments? Um, I do. Um, I'm, my name is Peggy Douglas and welcome. Uh, where have you, have you been a, an athletic director before and in what district? And can you give us a little history? Yeah, so I'm actually, for the beginning, I'm actually from Sunnyside. Mm -hmm. I was a Sunnyside Christian growing up and then... Jackson, would you mind? Oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Odyssey. Yeah, you get, you get the Odyssey. Odyssey. <laughs> like I said, I'm from Sunnyside. I'm a Sunnyside Christian. Um, mm -hmm. I've been an athletic director before. Uh, Waldorf School District, which is a 1A school, this is a 2A school. Mm -hmm. So I've been there for four years now. Mm -hmm. We've had a really good time there. I was the 7 through 12 district athletic director. Mm -hmm. So I've worked with both the middle school and the high school, been in charge of all coaches and athletics there. And this year, if I was there, uh, they're going to add some more duties. But yeah, I'm excited to be here. And the interview process was awesome. And yeah, just really excited to be here. Great. Well, we're excited to have you on board. Thank you so much. Yep. Well, so welcome. Yeah. Hey there. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And then this is my wife, Lindsay. Hi. And then our daughter, Remy. And then that's my dad, Dan Hawk. And then that's our little boy, Tatum. <laughs> <laughs> that's my family. Future Mustang, right? Future Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them. <laughs> that's right. Good. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. With that, uh, Make a motion to approve the contract of the athletic director recommended for hire. Second that motion. It's been moved and second to approve um, Jackson Hawk as athletic director. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, oh, same sign. Motion carries. Welcome, Jackson. Awesome. Pleasure to have you. Now it's official. The kids don't know, but they're hoping this is their first and their last yeah. board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to take off. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Take care. Have a good night. Thanks. Um, next item, Central Washington Joint Cooperative Milk and Dairy Products. So this one is pretty straightforward um, to, you know, partner with other um, organizations to get better yields on milk and dairy. So it's a very low risk. 
there's kind of no <laughs> Is this the same um, vendors that we had last year that are distributing? This is, this is a renewal. But the same people are supplying the milk are the same people, correct? Yeah. Okay. We have, I believe we have more than, like, we have more than one, but this is where, with this co-op, we have access to uh, multiple vendors. Okay. Thanks. I'll make a motion to approve the Central Washington Joint Cooperative for our milk and dairy products. Is it a one-year contract? Two years. Two years for the for the uh, the next two years. I have one question, Amy. Is it only supposed to be for Heights household and high school? Because that's what they listed like the bottom of the agreement. Um, that my, I I'm not a hundred percent versed in it. I know this came directly from our food service director, so she okay. would be, be able to answer that. Would you like me to reach out to her? Anything? You do give milk to everybody, though. It might <laughs> it might just be the, the delivery because I know we don't get delivery at all of the buildings. Yeah. We get it at our main buildings and then we distribute it from there. That sounds familiar from last year that we brought that up. And that's where it was. Well, I have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Been moved and second to approve the Central Washington Joint Crop Cooperative for milk and dairy products. Mm -hmm. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. There's been an, a request online uh, uh, to, uh, to, sorry, for the full name of the new athletic director. Someone was asking what his last name is. Hawk, but it's spelled H-A-A-K. Thank you. Okay. Next up is City of Prosper Aquatic, Aquatic Center Use Agreement. Yes. Can, yeah, that's fine. Um, so we did meet with the city of Prosser. Um, we, we did agree to go ahead and put forward this agreement right now. However, we do plan to continue those conversations um, to hopefully get to a net zero agreement with them. So we won't actually have to pay um, to use the pool. But for right now, it's better to just get the agreement in place to make sure we've got something. And if we have to pay, we will. But otherwise, over the next month or two, if we can get another agreement that would overwrite this one, and there would be an, a clause in there saying upon execution, then, you know, it would like overrule this language. So um, we I'll expand started. on that a little bit. We're talking about um, adult basketball, the use of the parks for different things, the sharing of different pieces of our facility to offset that cost and be good partners and good community members. So our goal is to have a net zero um, until we get a little bit further along with the old Prosser High School and what we would be doing and what their needs are for soccer, baseball, and some of those pieces. Um, we, we kind of have to def uh, define, not kind of, we must define the cost of each one of those to get to a net zero. And that's our goal because we feel it's fair to our community and public to be able to know, let's say something happens and we can't have baseball. I'm just going to pick something out. Then we would know what our, for not being able to have bas baseball, then what would our cost be to offset that? So each item needs to be defined. Oh. Thank you. Makes sense. Any other questions, comments? I'll entertain a motion. I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the uh, City of Cross Aquatic Center Use Agreement as presented. Thank you for that motion. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the City of Cross Aquatic Center Use Agreement. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries, and, and you're going to recuse. I'll um, jot that down. Thank you. Uh, next item is the PSC bargaining ratification document. So for that one, I did try to put as much information as I could on the cover of me seeing the full um, document with all of the changes, but are there specific questions you'd like us to see? Was a really great group to work with. We met multiple times and we went back and forth, but we feel that the agreement is. 
I did have just going through it, I, it nothing major, but there's some spelling and grammatical errors inside of it. Yes. So this, all of these changes will actually be incorporated into the full okay. document, the full contract document, and then we'll go through and look for any grammatical changes and work through that. Um, we did also put in the agreement that we'll work over the next year to update position descriptions, um, to reorganize the contract, just moving like this section over to this section to make sure it flows a little bit better. So it doesn't change the terms of the agreement, um, but it does leave it open for us to negotiate that over the next year as well. So little things. And um, Chris Mobley, who um, helps support the group um, in the bargaining, they've already gone through, this isn't the actual contract right here and made some places there's like double words or commas in word places or things that don't make sense. And so there we're already working through that. We want to clean it up and make it look easier to use and yeah, and very clean. So. And the final version of the contract will be what is on the website, what's posted yeah. on the website. But this um, upon ratification, this is what the board would be approving as changes, and then we would incorporate that as such. Any other questions or comments? I think the motion to approve the TSE bargaining for ratification. I'll second it been moved and seconded to approve the PSC bargaining agreement. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Moving on, item F is the 2023-24 cert certificated employee contract for the assistant superintendent, CTE director, and, and the director of behavioral services. Any questions, comments? I guess I would like to make a comment. Um, it has been in my three weeks time, I want to compliment the work and the partnership that Deanna and I have created in this very short time. And I think the community, the district, and um, and the, the four or five of you, I realize that uh, Jeannie's not here this evening, um, um, should know that that partnership has begun well and is going to be a strong partnership. So I just thought I would add that. Thank you. I make a motion to approve the 23-24 certificate employee contract for the assistant superintendent, CTE director, and director of behavioral services for the 23-24 certificate employee contract year. Your second. Second. Been moved and second to approve the 2324 certificated employee contracts for the assistant superintendent, CTE director, and the director of behavioral services. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next up is vouchers. I have a few questions. Um, and sorry, I didn't get them to you earlier, but um, BMO Harris Bank NA. Yes. Okay, so BMO is our P card vendor now. Okay. So we're going to technically write a check and then cancel it because we're doing a funds transfer with our bank. Um, so this is a way that you'll see each vendor that we've used the P-Card. So it was the Department of Licensing. Um, here, there's three vendors that we process. So it's gonna, it's actually going to look like that expense goes to that vendor. But really, the vendor is BMO. So one check will go to BMO for that amount. Um, and then we void that on the back end and transfer the money into an account that gets pulled by BMO. That helps our rebate. We'll get a bit, uh, larger rebate, rebate by having the money pulled. Um, but from an accounting perspective, that's what we are doing right now until we can get an ACH policy in place, which we're not ready to do just yet for um, for AP. Okay. You'll start to see those every month going forward. Okay. 
Um, my next question is phase two electric. It says it's so it's like nine thousand dollar bill to repair a light pole. That's what I took from the details. You have the word on that one. Uh, nine oh seven eight four eight. For the damaged light pole and luminaire head with required wiring maintenance. For the whole pole. This is a local park in Rockingham. It was probably around February. It's a windstorm that took it down. Oh, no kidding. A windstorm took the light pole down? It was technically before me, but yeah, I would be really? through all this and lost all the leaves. We might. Um, we might have an insurance claim out for that one. Okay. I'll double check with my team. Okay. I'm pretty sure we had it. So what will happen with the insurance, they'll pay us back for anything over the $1,000 deductible, okay. and then it will uh, be recovered. Can I ask that we write that in our notes, please, to follow up with Clear Risk and make sure we have a claim number? Absolutely. Yeah, my Clear Risk contacted me last week to they had not been uh, okay through them yet. It had been emailed to somebody else. The bill had been and then not been paid. Mm. That's how I got involved. Yeah. Gotcha. That's all I had. Anybody else have any questions? Any. I'll entertain a motion for the vouchers. Make a motion to approve the vouchers. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded to approve the vouchers. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <clears throat> okay. Let me get the next item is. There it is. Resolution 19 23. This is the TVF budget extension. So, this is for the current year. Um, we're only planning to need an additional couple thousand, but I went ahead and kind of shot big in case anything else comes up between now and August, then we wouldn't have to do this again. It doesn't mean we need to spend the money. It just means it's there in case we have to. Um, but really the only thing left is the interest for the interfund, um, the interfund loans. So that will be charged in August. Um, so we'll, our fund balance will be a little bit higher than what's presented. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 1923, uh, Transportation Vehicle Fund Budget Extension. Second that motion. Okay, this is a roll call vote. Um, Peggy? Yes. Anthony? Yes. Lisa? Yes. And I too will vote yes. Uh, motion carries. Uh, next up is resolution 20 23, Esser. Okay. Um, so this one is almost a duplicate of what was um, approved in May. I work with um, OSPI and our county. We were hoping that the money could just, once we receive it, go directly into the capital projects for the claim for ESSER 3. Unfortunately, that's not what we can do. They can't do that on the back end. So I updated the language a little bit to be a little bit more broad. So any grant claim specific for ESSER 3 that the expense is already on capital projects, this would give me authorization to move those funds as those claims come in. We would have all the documentation and everything to back it up. So in, in the event of an audit, when we're moving funds, it would match the claim. We expect to spend all the funds this fiscal year. If we didn't, this would be um, this would go into the 23-24 year, but we don't anticipate needing to do that. Okay, thank you. I'll make a motion to approve re resolution number 20 23 ESSER fund. Second that motion. And moved and seconded to approve resolution 20 23. Um, this is a roll call vote. Peggy? Yes. Anthony? Yes. Lisa? Yes. I too will vote yes. Motion carries. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, next up is uh, consultant service agreements for volleyball. So this one, we had a camp that is an after the fact approval. Um, it was just something that was overlooked by the coach, um, but we had other coaches from YVCC come in and teach the girls um, for volleyball camp. So this is a formality to 
Um, I can add to that just because of history. So they've done this many years in that the manner that they plan to do it, not knowing that that wasn't the way they could do it. So when they came in, Amy, she said, no, we have to have the agreement. At this point, the camp's already happening. So that's, so I think moving forward, they'll do it a different way, but they didn't know that they would do it that way. So they've always done it that way. So just working to the people that a lot of people don't even know exist. I'll expand on that just a little bit for you. Um, one of the things that um, happens when you have a combined camp or you have something so often you'll have a person who organizes and then you'll have multiple co coaches come and help and how we pay them, um, whether we um, ask for a W-9 or how we how we track that money is what kind of has has come into play and both Amy and I are very um, detail driven. And so it came about instead of just writing a check to you and then you go cash the check and give a little bit to each person, right? As the camp organizer, we needed to know who was receiving the funds. And so that's where this um, procedural piece came from. And so those are some things as um, Deanna shared that is going to be put in place and we'll do some coaching on those processes as we move forward. If Jackson was here, we could tell him that would be part of it. That's going to be part of his job. <laughs> I make the wish to just pay the consultant service agreement for the fireball. It's been moved and seconded to, to approve the consultant service agreement for volleyball. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right. Next up is consultant service agreement with TLC Enterprises. So this is just to extend or renew um, the agreement with um, Larry Gregory. Mm -hmm. right here. I put the estimated, or I put the, what we paid so far in this year that may or may not have a correlation with next year. Really, like we might spend, you know, $500 next year and pull up with you. But anyways, we might spend a ton of, it might be twice as much. It just really depends on how many years. Just for an idea. I'll make a motion that we can uh, continue our services with Larry Gregory. Uh, so the consulting services agreement with Larry Gregory, uh, TLC Enterprises. Second the motion. Been moved and second to to approve the consult service agreement with TLC Enterprises. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next up is Pacific Office Automation Contract. Me again. <laughs> I kind of tag team this one too. Do you want to start how it started and then I'll talk to you? So we are, um, our copier um, lease is up on August 31st of this year. So we, um, we were, our rep reached out to us and just said, hey, would you like to you know, talk about options to renew? Um, we've been at the same company for many years, many, 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 many years. Um, but they're they're good to us, and they're on state contracts, so it's easy to say yes. Let's you know what do you have for us? Um, but working with superintendent, she advised that we should get a couple quotes to either buy out, um, buy out machines outright, um, just in case you know if, if there was an opportunity to use funds now and save the yearly expense later, just to see kind of where that landed. Um, so I did kind of put the full range on there, but it would be a lot of money, and I don't know how much you want to say. So I think one of the things that um... We've been talking since my tenure began is about autumn um, recurring costs that maybe could be managed differently. Um, if you are a person who leases an automobile versus buying an automobile, those kinds of things, the costs that occur. Copiers, however, are a little bit different in the, re not a, not really though, I guess, but when the copier breaks down, we pick up the phone and we call and they come and fix the copier. The problem with that sometimes is kind of like cars, you get 10 that don't have a problem and you have one that does, is the cost of that lease um, exorbitant for the amount of what we would spend if we had to repair. So one of the things that we looked at um, was purchasing the, what we have now outright versus buying all new machines. And you'll see that in your cover letter. 
at the financial position that we're in right now with me being new in my tenure, we did decide to um, continue with our agreement. You'll notice that just because we asked, um, you'll notice that the current contract rate to the new contract rate went down. Um, so sometimes it doesn't hurt to ask the question and bring them that we're shopping and that we're aware and we're being cognizant. So that's part of that process. Um, I will entertain that we look into figuring out how to either purchase them in a cycle, much like the plan was done with the school buses in an odd way, right? Where you purchase them and then you slowly, and then you each year or so you purchase one or two or how, whatever the cycle is. And, and that would be something that we would entertain in the future. For now, I am going to recommend that we continue on until we have a, put a plan in place to begin that purchasing process. And this is a, a five-year agreement, so we would have quite a bit of time to really put that plan in place. Um, and we haven't had any major complaints. They have been working with, when we have issues with the copiers, they have done great um, at, at least helping us out. It's not always timely, as with anything, you're waiting on parts and stuff, but it's, they've been good to us from what I've heard and seen myself. Do we have any other leases for printers with any other companies or just Pacific? Just yes, Pacific. Pacific officer. Yeah. So we do have the, like the individual printers that right. teachers have are not covered by any contract. I did not pursue the conversation. I mean, we started to have the conversation about maybe them taking it over and helping with that, but I just don't think there's going to be much cost value um, savings there. So we did not pursue that conversation any further. And um, I think the reason our usage did go down a little bit, which is also where we can have some savings. They did recognize that our use went down, but our costs went up elsewhere. So we're not really having a savings. We're just realigning. Thank you. But it's good. At least it's not going up in both directions. I make a motion to approve the Pacific Office Automation contract. Second that motion. Been moved and seconded to approve the Pacific Automa Office Automation contract. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next up is the Prosser School District 2324 Student and Parent Handbook. So I think there's quite a few different people in here that can talk. I'm going to have Deanna start a little bit because she has a little more on the history. And then I'll share with you where I got involved. So um, many, several years ago, we used to have a student handbook. It was always read. It went out every year. And then there was a time where we went from printing them because the cost to, to them being electronic. Parents, you know, uh, signed off still that they saw them, but probably didn't really look electronically and read them. <laughs> and not that, except for some of these parents, they would have totally missed our entire handbook. Um, and so uh, the, the principals were actually tasked uh, over a year ago to, to work on this because there's been quite a bit of change in discipline law. Um, you know, exclusionary discipline, all kinds of things have changed. And so they did that. They did all this work lot a year ago, spring. It was done. It's been done. Um, there's probably still is some we need to go through and make sure it, it aligns to our policies because the policies have to be updated as well to match the new policies that are out. Uh, but uh, they, they, I will, in their defense, they've been trying to get this pushed out for a while. So we're very happy that it's here, still in draft form. Um, there's still probably some work that needs to be done, but our goal is to have it printed and out for parents in print. So, and it kind of tries to cover kind of all the avenues of what a parent and a student need to know for school. I'm gonna add to that. Um, so I was asked in uh, uh, one of the bargaining discussions was, um, how do we know? How, how do we know what's in here? And, and my statement to them was, we have to start somewhere. We have to put something to start from. And as we use a tool, then we find a paragraph that's not written well, or we um, find that our policy, and I'm not going to use a number or anything, but might say will and the and the state policy says may or um, something like that. But if we don't put something in writing that can be the starting point of a discussion, um, and we're waiting for it to be perfect. I don't think it will ever be perfect. Um, one of the things that we learned in, in, in my teaching is, and when I was a teacher was um, our constitution was written and it's had a thousand and thousands and thousands of, but if it doesn't start somewhere, 
it you can't you can't build on something mm -hmm. um i would like to draw your attention to page 41 of the handbook i do want to talk about page 41 it actually will become page two when it actually goes to print this is my letter to the parents um, that goes in the front of the handbook um and so in the handbook will also be printed in two both languages it's just about done being translated and then we do have to have um, our team truly look at the translation. Um, you just can't use Google Translate, in other words. <laughs> I mean, it's getting better, but you still can't. There's some terminology and words that mm -hmm. are not used. And so um, we are putting our best foot forward in saying that, um, as I heard through parents in different meetings, that um, our, our schools and our school systems, our parents, students, and community have to be held to a level that we um, can improve. Um, I see us, <laughs> she's yacht, nodding her head, that it, we have to have a place to hold people accountable. And this is how it begins. It's not the end all, but it's a place to begin. Well, I thought the content was fantastic. I thought your letter was very nice and welcoming. I really appreciated the information regarding the importance of attendance and truancy, and then I think outlining discipline and what happens. I think, you know, I've got my hard copy of everything tonight. I, I like to have a hard copy and I think everybody retains information differently, but I do think it's good. Like we, we gave you the book. You said you read the book. Get your book out, read um, the book. I think it was well done. Also, please note that page 42 is the signature page. We struggled a little bit with how to do this. So it'll be a person's name and they'll list all the names of the students in the building. So if, um, if for example, if there's parents in the audience, if you have two students in Housel, You'll put both their names and check the box for Housel, but you may come home with your student from the high school and they'll need to rip it out and do it again because there's just not a good electronic way to say we have one parent or one form for all of your children in the district. It's also really hard to, uh, to um, match up sometimes. In, even in my household, my children have a different last name than mine. And so if we don't have that, it's just really good. And we can take all of the students' names in the building and say, Yep, we have a form for every person, and that's our auditing purposes when we go back and have may have a discipline or a, or a family issue. This is the way we'll be able to say, you, you know, you knew this. Um, negligence of not reading is, is <laughs> not necessarily our problem. You, you haven't, so that's our goal. And um, Elisa, I do want to comment um, that the team, the administrative team is the one who really deserves the credit for the work um putting it together and so forth is in culminating it is some work that Deanna and, and Selena and I have done but the administrators really need the credit for the work you guys did a great job and I like that it's going to be in print again thank you for all the time Michael Dunning and Jody Sabin can accept that for the whole <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I do have a question a couple of questions um and since I'm stuck on the disciplinary side, <laughs> um, we've talked for uh, the past year on updating the discipline policy. Does this reflect the updates to the discipline policy? This is probably more reflective of the lot of the policy. Okay. The updates the most current from from lot of the. So where are we at in updating the district's discipline policy? I hope to have a first reading or a discussion for you at the first August meeting and a second reading shortly thereafter. Okay. Um, the goal would have been to have that before the first day of school. I don't know that that's, we'll at least have the first reading in on the record um, with not a short time thereafter to make sure that they do match. Well, I know well, I'm eager, you. but it's got to happen. They have to match or or we might be in trouble if we had a deep discussion. I mean, yeah. if we had a big problem. Yeah. So um, I know this is gonna is it, I mean this will go to print at some point, right? Um, probably, hopefully, I don't know. Next week, we're hoping. <laughs> yeah. So if we make adjustments or updates to the discipline policy, how are we going to get the updates into the student uh, the student parent book, or how are we going to relay that information that this no longer may not be viable? We would always keep the updated version on the website with a date of, of revision. Um, okay. And then if we're doing a good job, we would make those revisions as it lives throughout the year. If we find a, a 
a num you know, like let's say we quote an RCW and that number is different or we do something, we would always keep that updated. And we would publicly, I believe, have to legally let them know in, in formal publication that there's been a major change. Uh, I don't believe grammatic um, spelling, those kinds of things have to legally be told, but if there's a change in our policy, let's just say it says policy one, two, three, four in here, and we change it to four, five, six, seven in our system, then that's a major change so that they know where to find okay. that. Yeah. I could say too, when we had the, used to have the red book, um, when I was a principal, I went directly to that book every time I had to deal with a suspension, any sort of suspension expulsion, because it said, if this happens, then this happens. At this age, this happens. And that's what I think both people need. I know not everything is black and white all the time, but there is quite a bit of black and white. And then sometimes there's a little bit of gray. So, Great, thank you. That's, uh, that's exciting. My next comment is on the dress code. Um, so we outline in the, you know, we have a policy, we outline it in this um, uh, student parent handbook. How are we as a district going to implement the dress code policy so that it's treated equally and fairly across all the schools at all times? That's a good question because um, You could go probably walk through our primary school or school that has primary kids and find students with spaghetti strap tops on. And it's like, well, they're just little girls. It's, you know, so that that isn't, that's been an issue. So, um, and sometimes it is a matter of how we had kind of address things because, you know, certain people, maybe sometimes it's a male, you know, addressing as a female student like one of the protocols or ways we would do that better are appropriate is there somebody else that might be addressing that versus maybe the male teacher so it, it that is a big challenge and that's where parents get very frustrated um i i know um in my days when i we a student was we were handling a dress code and they said well I wore this to X school and they didn't care. Mm -hmm. It's a problem. So it is something that, you know, Kim and I will work with the administrative team on that consistency and um, enforcing it. But it's also really letting parents know when they're going out to buy school clothes, like this is a very good time to let people know what, what's appropriate, remind them of what's allowed at school um, and what kids are able to wear. So there, there has been some, you know, a little bit of, I think a little bit of um, more acceptance of some things that like tank tops and things didn't used to be accepted. And now they are, as long as the strap is wide enough, um, some things like that. So I know Michael and Jody could probably speak to that, but. Well, we, before school last year, we had made some, some additions or subtractions or changes. And so it lined up more K-12. Yeah. And so, you know, there used to be elementary and then secondary. And so we tried to find some common common ground in that. Um, you know, the probably one of the biggest issues that we have is, you know, they'll show up in the morning, it's 50, 6 degrees, they're wearing a nice jacket or something over by midday, that's off. And so it's the, you know, just kind of that constant reminder, constant positive discussion about it um you know we really hit it hard in the fall and we really hit it hard in the spring. you know in the spring but really having that conversation all year long so it's just like any other you know like in the hallway stay to the right except the past appropriate clothing appropriate you know uh, noise levels you know that kind of stuff so um you know we try to be consistent about that i know that we have that ebb and flow at the beginning but um you know as, as we work on it we you know it's been probably one of the biggest things that um we try to be consistent about i got mail you know email last year you know saying you guys are ridiculous and stuff but um we're just trying to follow what what is written here and and trying to really communicate it so it doesn't become that corrective behavior and then the frustration email coming back from parent is that ongoing conversation and modeling it ourselves as adults and all that kind of stuff okay. i think from a past um high school principal situation mm -hmm. too um the example of 50 degrees in the morning and then um, you get a statement from a student who says, well, I've had it on all day. Nobody said anything to me now. Well, it, 
7.30 this morning out on a sweatshirt and at one o'clock you don't. Um, the other thing is, is we need our teachers teaching um, and not necessarily being closed police. So it, it really comes from a culture um, and it doesn't happen overnight. Um, and so it comes from a culture that we're here about learning and education. And um, I can many a times had a conversation that says, oh my gosh, you are beautiful. You go clubbing on Friday night in that outfit. You That's where you belong. That looks awesome. I need you to dress like a student during the day, not in, like you're going clubbing it on Friday night. So it really is honoring the beauty and how they do and what they respect and their individualism, but that we have a we have a way that we dress at a golf course. We have a dress way that we dress at a rodeo and we have a way. And so there's a, a way we dress at school. Okay. So that's our goal. And it's never perfect, by the way. I promise you, you'll have many complaints and many happy, ever is. but it won't be, it won't be easy. If you mean this uh, affects you directly, what do you think um, of this handbook? And I think it's pretty good. I mean, I'm a pretty good rule follower. So like, I don't really take into account like the discipline like stuff because I know I won't be breaking them. So, but we appreciate that too. <laughs> <laughs> on behalf of all fifteen-year-old girls, I'm sorry that there's been such backlash with the dress code, and I don't understand that personally. Like, just follow it. <laughs> but yeah, but thank you for doing the tank top thing. I think that really loosened things up and it made it so teachers could focus more on like teaching and more like um and less on like having to dress code someone for maybe a tank top so i think it was good. thank you is this for approval for action i think this one I think one of um, it it's on an app. We would like to have an approval, and this is the reason being, is that we kind of like the parents signing, right? We would like to have support that you understand what's in it and the purpose behind it. Um, also, when we present something or have a conversation with a student or a parent, that we can say that the school board reviewed this and are supporting our decisions co collectively as a district. Yeah. I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve the Foster School District 2324 student and parent handbook. Second that motion. Been moved and second to approve the Foster School District 2324 student and parent handbook. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign. Motion carries. That will complete our action items for tonight. Moving on to discussion items. Uh, construction updates. Hot seat. What do we want to speak about? <laughs> so first of all, how was vacation? Oh, wonderful. Good. Coffee from a balcony overlooking the ocean was nice. Yeah, good. <laughs> good way to wake up. That's right. <laughs> good. Okay. By Winstrand today, the turf looks great. The sea looks horrible. The building looks wonderful. Um, we're scheduled to start moving Monday morning. The uh, moving trucks are going to show up at 8. I think we're getting three trucks and like 10 guys, whatever they send. Um, all right, so the tree trimming started over at the old high school. Uh, they have probably three more days, four more days there before that's done. Uh, Kim and I met with DA Hogan which is sort of the premier um, track sports uh, architect in the state. Uh, they actually looked at some of the bids we had the first time, and his his advice was to actually go with the one from Beta uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, if there's any chance of still getting in this summer, uh, to go with them. And then we worked out sort of in a, we haven't got anything on paper yet for the agreement, but they're going to come over and do like quality control and some other stuff for us. It's a uh, sort of a day-to-day -day contract, and I guess how we worded it, where you know he'll give us one day a week for you know a month and a half or something to come over and check on things. The the track that he actually uh, 
recommended was not the middle of the road one that originally I had talked brought to you guys. He actually thought we should go back down a little bit uh, to the one that is it's about 365. Uh, but he is also convinced that our asphalt and everything's all good. Cracks can all be fixed. Uh, the only thing that's going to have to be demoed to start over on the track scenario is the, uh, the Javelin runway thing for a couple of reasons. We can patch it, but the new specs are it kind of looks like a like a oar now. It's so thin and it goes up, it gets out. Mm -hmm. And the specs now are for basically a rectangle. Yeah. Um, and then we have the one leak that's um, right below there. So by the time we rip that up and do that, the cold patch was not suggested. So it we do need to, to fix that full piece. I have to tell all of you that he was um, very complimentary on the actual overall condition of the track, um, as far as the asphalt and the work, the, the cracks that are there um, are uh, normal wear and tear. There wasn't any upheaval. He showed us how he stood back and looked and the, the track didn't do this, which means the bed that it was originally laid on was laid properly. And the, the only real concern he had was there's not a lot of track left, so how do you scrape it? Because it's worn pretty evenly. Yeah. Would you? I mean, he was quite complimentary about that. So yeah, for the 20, 22 years, I think that the ten year track has lasted. He was pretty impressed. Yeah, he was. He was, and he um, talked about the differences in the prices are very much like what. Kevin Gilman explained on the window covering mm -hmm. the how long it lasts, um, its level of, of care, those types of things. Um, we're able to go with the red, which is a standard color. Um, we didn't have any other major, Andy, there wasn't any other major cost than just doing it. Um, all, of the, all of the sand, I call them sandboxes. I don't know what they're called for like the high jump and stuff. His opinion, they were a little narrow, but they're still within the, the specs for WIA, so we don't have to redo them. With the and all we have is some sand fill and some things like that to bring them up, but there wasn't any major. The big change, yeah, actually, the, the track, the track, that discussion worked very well. The big change is going to be the tennis court idea. Uh, I had brought forward the idea of moving it to the middle school and using what we would pay to demo the old courts to add to, to get another one and do a new construction and walk away from that, right? Maybe maybe repair and leave it for preschool to play on basketball hoops, whatever. Um, he actually looked at our site there and the area that is over, uh, kind of by, by my shop where the trees are, he's like, this would be. <clears throat> so we went and walked it. He, yeah, I haven't gotten anything from him since then. It's only been a week. Um, but he thinks he can put a six there by the time they pay the dirt work for the four that I had dreamt of. Uh, he thinks he can get a six over there. And one of the, there's a couple of big pieces there is there's, you talked about putting in underground sprinklers. Mm -hmm. Well, it's already hand lines there. So the amount of digging up and work that has to be done, that yes. the, the, it's level already. And then we think about our families and our people who are coming to see, we have the big, beautiful trees, the natural place for, um, shade for visitors people watching access for buses and drop off um as like in anything a, you might say a concern would be restrooms and different things but regardless of where we're doing it we're going to have to bring in temporary things for different times mm -hmm. so we have to do that but little to no ground prep i mean you've got foundational ground prep in the, but the prep of the of the Kinder level level but as far as level, the other thing is, is there's um, relatively good street access and, and whatever. So I don't think we'd have too many where we're kind of um, congested at that end where, what, what did you, what do you guys call that sandbox? You can call it the, I called it the cat box, but yeah. it's a volleyball court. <laughs> <laughs> but right there, there's quite a bit of congestion right there on that end of the street, where if we took it to the other end, where some of our community members are already using, used to using that overflow parking. Um, we'll see what the price is, but I mean, I think it's a, and then the, the, the sandbox stays and we could have 
outdoor volleyball and it doesn't interfere with having to change the playground. I want to say the other big thing that you had told me when you were talking about it was because of the height of that playground, there's a bunch of work that have to be done for handicap accessibility and that, and it was, it's a, it's like a flat go on the other side. So uh, he said there would still, we would still have to probably pay like a path and like three or four spots and a small ramp yeah. down in, but the, the actual, the dirt work in the area that I had suggested the north end is like six feet. I mean, it's it's pretty substantial. Uh, over there, the actual court area, well, there's no almost no utilities, no buried no, stuff. News to you, Mr. Denny. Yeah, it is. Yeah, good news. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. There's pretty good parking over there too, isn't there? Yeah. There's, there's a fair amount of parking area. It's gravel. Yeah, but it's That's a good parking area world. over there. It is. The only thing that we need to keep in mind is when there is a soccer game and a baseball game and tennis, it, it isn't a lot of parking over there. And there it really isn't street parking over there unless you park illegally, um, like during the fireworks. <laughs> people do but um it's just something to keep in mind with scheduling if there were big and if i think if we had six courts we could have a tournament there you go. that's the magic number is what i told you yeah. well and that's good for our community right mm -hmm. food lodging all those things and the supporting the community that way right. and then last but not least uh we've gotten some bids to get started pulling the old big shrubs out and cleaning that hillside up, doing a walk path. Um, the, the walk path idea has changed a couple of times. I wanted to go from the gate up, and apparently that's like three degrees past whatever ADA it is supposed to be, so that ain't gonna happen. So we met with, or I, and Andy was gone. Um, I met with Ed Champagne on the telephone. We have a Zoom meeting. It's my understanding when the original drawing for the new high school was done, that was, Part of that was in there so they have those drawings already and we um, are going to be able to work with them and the relationship with myself and ed personally and my past relationship with at architects west and what has been done we're going to zoom and we're going to see if we can use some of that work that's already been done and not have to pay for it again which would be a great cost savings and then um i you saw in my pulse of processor i've already talked we have um so I, I don't know if there's ever such thing as a nice part of Pawnee, <laughs> but um, a design for ADA um, that will go down at the bottom where the ticket booth is and up above um, so that those who are going both ways. And um, so we got some things in place that we can let the community know that we're moving forward and that we're doing things in the right direction. We do have um, one thing that we've talked to the people who are moving or help going have bid to remove the shrubs is it will have to have some kind of fabric covered on it and stake down um, we will keep it wet but we have a windstorm and it's blowing dust to our neighbors and our other people so we do have a i don't want to say a cost but we have to take that into consideration until the project is com uh, completed and slightly laster but still not <laughs> least uh, we started moving sped into the old high school yesterday or monday monday, monday. did um, the cove base come today no okay so, so we, everything's been left two feet out away from the wall waiting for the it's been painted the base, to go. what part of the old high school was that 119 118 119 120 the old high school hall yeah, right, across, right by the npr yes right across from the gym <laughs> All I know is my room showers is it's not old to me. Yeah. Well, yeah. It has the best accessibility yeah. from the street. And that's part of what led us to trimming the trees and making that open. Yeah. Yeah. And we have lots of cleaning and projects to do before it's ready for the yes. public. Yeah, there's there's lots more ideas to come, but we're trying to get the big stuff knocked out. Um, I imagine we'll be done. Well, I know we'll be done moving by the end of the week, probably by the end of the day tomorrow. And there's like a dozen of these fire cabinets in there like a thousand pounds each it's been interesting we actually loaded them we I, I found some rollers that are awesome and so we roll them to the door we put them on a forklift and drive them around the block and back them. it's actually they're heavy pretty good <laughs> so 
have a question, like a follow-up question about the track. I know we're kind of getting time crunched. When is it, I guess, when could we see something to where we can actually take action on and, and um, still have it done in time for track in the spring? We're, we're right down here, to right the now. right like now. You gave me a green light tonight. I called tomorrow. We'll try to get on the list. It's that close. And a lot of that will depend on Mother Nature, too. And what I mean by that is they take it off, and then we have football going on. So a crew comes in and strips it off, and then we have to play, and we have to do, and then we have to have practice. We have to keep football off of it, and then we put it on. And how fast can they come in? I he, think he told us. He, how indi he indicated that, that if, if we call Bainan, ace out, get a contract, that what we would want to do is put the, the uh, finish of the project in the contract about a week prior to the first day of football because you're always going to have issues. Uh, worst case scenario, and I, I hate to even say it like this, but you're working on the track and not working on the football field. So worst case scenario, if something happened, all the equipment could go to one side on a Friday night, and then you know it's not the end of the world. At but, least the community knows where making yeah. strikes. Is that, it a two-week project, a three-week project? Well, probably or? more, about a month is that event. Uh, so we're down like to days. Yeah. From a financial perspective, that really depends on one of the next discussion items. And I think the first day of football is August 16th. Oh, oh well, practice, but practice. we're referring to a and game. And they practice when, up here. And we're free, referring to a game. Yeah, yeah they're, they're all painted up and everything yeah. up here. So until okay. September, whatever the first day is. When's the first home game? Oh. Uh, the first. The first oh, September. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're right there. Well, I don't think it's the end of the world if we don't get it completed by the start of football. I mean, most, no. what do we have? Soccer and football are the only two sports that play on the grass, right? Yeah. Um, and we, we keep have, them off for practices and lock it up for. Well, yeah. I mean, we we have a practice field. Right. We have. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just game wise, soccer, we have yeah. soccer and football are the only two teams yeah. that play on it. So it's, it's not the end of the world, but yeah, you know, weather weather is our enemy at this point. So the sooner the sooner we get on the list to try to get it done this year, the better. Yeah. Can't think of anything else. Anything interesting? Any questions no. you want to ask? I, I just wanted to come and I drove by uh, Rosser Heights um, coming home from Pinnacle today. I noticed that you'd been trimming some of the trees up there along Crosser Heights. And I thought, wow, you guys are really on the ball. You're trimming every place. So, yeah, the trees actually were down to probably only about a half a dozen more to finish. And yeah. they're, they're done. Well, well, what we can do from the ground. So. Right. Look, it looked good. Now it's a matter of getting rid of the rock chucks. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. I Thank appreciate it. The Thanks, first Andy. actual home league football game is the 14th. Absolutely. Okay. And next up uh, for this discussion is employability skills curricular update. Um, in your board packet is the um, letter. Um, um, addressing that employability skills. I've met with the different parties involved. Um, there is a rubric attached on page two. It's still sitting in draft form. Um, the big things that uh, we do want to discuss is that all employability skill, employability skill points will be used this, by the same by all teachers. Uh, Pre-arranged excuse absences, absences would always be identified as no count. And the key word here is pre-arranged and excused. Um, so there is requirements to make something excused. Um, so just because it's pre-arranged does not mean it's excused. There is some work that goes inside that. And then school activities, um, which may include but are not limited to athletics, clubs, field trips, et cetera, would be remain as no count. Um, I want you to know this was um, the situation that has been going on prior to my start, and I'm happy to say that this is finished and done, and, and all parties involved are pleased with the end result. Great. Thank you. Any questions regarding that? All right.
Next up is the Patterson non-high capital contributions. So um, this is another one that I stepped into and am, am learning my way around. First of all, I didn't even know when I began my journey that there was an RCW that talks about non-high schools and contributions to the high school where they go. So I've learned a lot about that RCW and that it's pretty vague and it's kind of open and that you can ask for support and they don't have to give it. And then I found um, an, uh, a draft agreement um, between past administration and Patterson that was kind of drafted and talked about. Um, Amy provided me with, um, some of the discussion goes like this. So, and please correct me if I'm wrong on the numbers from those of you that are bef long before Kim. So if the high school was originally built for 1200 students, and we say that our enrollment now is 980, and Patterson sends us, for easy math in my head, they send us 10 students, 10 divided by 1200 or 10 divided by 980 is a different number. And that then changes the negotiation piece and, and what they feel is due us and we feel is, or they feel they owe and what we feel is due us. And that's where the negotiation comes from. I have spoke, um, I think three times by phone and two email with Joe West, their current superintendent. He talked to their school board last night and I have not spoke to him today. Um, so I don't know the outcome of that discussion like what's happening here. Um, they have, we have two different things that were in that initial agreement was one, if we give you X number of dollars in a lump sum, it's a smaller amount than if we make payments to you. For us in the track and the track, the tennis court project and where we're at, we're entertaining a one lump sum. What he shared with me was, well, just because you're entertaining that and, and we even may agree it, we don't have that money sitting in the bank. We're a small district, so forth. So then what happens is then they would um, find an operation loan to be able to pay us. And then they go to their um, taxpayers to ask for a capital levy or something to pay that expense. So there's multiple pieces that come here. However, he did share that um, the school, the Patterson School Board wants to get it over with as much as we want to get it over with. And now we just kind of have to come up with an agreed upon number. Um, at one point, I believe there was a discussion of the 450 number, and then there's a million dollar number on the table and, and coming to the middle. Um, so our conversations back and forth, he talked to his school board tonight. I said that I would present that to you tonight and that what I would like from you is some discussion about are we in agreement that we would like to come up with a number for a one lump sum versus us borrowing money and using the yearly payment that they would give to us to make our payment? That's kind of what I would like to know. Do you have thoughts on that or can we discuss that? So you do, did I make myself clear what I'm asking? So if we decide we want to do the track and the tennis court and we do an operation or a, cap, a loan to do those projects, then is the money that we get from them on a yearly basis, then basically the loan payment to that, right? Mm -hmm. Or do we try and do it within the lump sum and then we don't have a loan against our, um, our, Funding capabilities, right? Our our assets, right? We don't have a loan against that. Um, I would like your thoughts on that, so that I know how to proceed forward. When and obviously the contract negotiating amount is a school board decision. Um, obviously, I'd have thoughts or input on that, but it would be a a board decision. And that number is kind of ambiguous right at the moment. I know that I told them that we would not settle for 450. Um, so you can know that that did come from me, but I don't know the actual total amount that that is out there. So basically the first step is that they need to know from us is do we want a one lump sum or are we willing to take the payment or payment comp idea with or more money? 
Do we have any idea what it would cost us for the loan? Would it be beneficial even if we're paying interest on the loan to get smaller payments over time? If I do not know that, I mean, we'd have to go out and see what kind of interest rate we could get. Um, my thoughts, if you're wanting them, with if we're trying to get the track done now, we have to maintain control and do it now. So we'd have to go out and get that money, get the loan now, go, you know, enter into that debt now. And it's unlikely that they're going to fully fund our two projects. So if we're going to go for debt, say we're going to go for 600000 or five or 700000 and they're going to pay us back. 500 or just because 500 I'm just gonna use that number well we still have to we would still have the debt of the 200,000 um so by doing it that way we could fund these two projects and get them going right away and I don't know that I would feel comfortable doing that without a signed agreement from them saying yes we are going to give you these payments and these are this is the schedule because then otherwise we are into that debt without the the revenue stream confirmed um but it would give us control to move forward right away if we wait on them and if they have to go out for a capital levy, you're talking six months to a year. And that's if it passes the first time, which I'm not saying it wouldn't. But if, if you put that ball back in their court, we're going to have this conversation again in a year. So, I mean, that's my, per my maybe my personal interpretation of it, but it is more risky for us to take that on initially. So, and of course, it's we're going to have to pay that. But if we, if we say we're like, we're only going to spend what they give and say they're going to give 500000 we get that okay within well, our budget's only 475000 because we want to make sure that they're paying the interest on that. And I'm just throwing out random numbers, but it, it would be the board's decision on whether we're going to go over what they pay to have these two projects done or if we're going to, you know, have the ceiling be whatever their funding is. And that's what we, we'd make our decision. Is the amount of money the same, whether it's a payment or a lump sum, or is there a difference in this? It's two? my understanding from when Joe and I spoke that they know that the payment over time would we would ask for more than we would ask if it was a lump sum so either way we're gonna have to come up with a loan to get this project started if, the, if we want to get a track now. by spring yeah I don't, I don't think our capital project i don't know that our capital projects can our no, pro capital what... projects account has enough to fully fund for sure not both i know that i mean i I'm pretty confident. Um, even one would be pushing our cash flow. I, I don't want to get us into a cash flow issue right now. We're still doing this ESSER reimbursement. So I have to spend the money and get reimbursed. And I, I need six months probably to really let which can fully be billed out and cash out. We still have state reimbursements coming through. So from a cash flow perspective, I don't know that I'd want to throw out the 400000 right away for the track. So and I, I think it would be best to get a loan. And I, I'm sorry, I kind of interrupted you. I was dead. No, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. Um, I don't know that there was not any impl um Joe did not or Mr. West did not imply that they were not going to be able to pay us immediately, but the money that they have available right now is less because they would have to recoup their refill their coffers based on the the levy is how I understood it. So I'm not saying he does or doesn't, but I just am saying he didn't imply that. So so another option would be a, maybe a larger lump sum payment, not a large, but a larger first initial payment to get us started and then payments over time. That was something that didn't come up, I don't believe, in the last agreement, Were but it would kind of be a meet in the middle. I mean, at this point, I think the, the floor is open to do whatever you want. Um, but from a decision with Andy, like what where we're going with the track, that has to be made in the next couple of weeks if you're wanting to meet our timeline. So there's that pressure of that timing, and then also how are we going to fund this, and how and what are we going to do with this agreement? So it's a lot. You know, and so uh, let me make sure I understand. So either we 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 take out a loan, and we receive payments from which or uh, Patterson. Two is we use some of our own cash use whatever lump sum they can give us at the time to get us going and complete it, may not do the whole project, and then finalize whatever that agreement is. <clears throat> and third option, was, was there a third yeah, option? To wait and have them oh. get the money, get the full amount, give us a lump sum, and then we do the project. But so, 
six months. It's next year. We're, yeah. we're having the same conversation this next summer, Correct. basically. Or in this February, or, yeah. March, so that it would be done. It does, I mean, started after the season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we want it done in time for track, you almost have to take our money and part of their money and do just the track and don't worry about the tennis courts for this next year. But I'm going to, I feel like I'm kind of stuck between two worlds here, but um, because of, of history, but I'm just going to say, I think that, and I've been saying this for several years, um, I think that Patterson has an obligation to support the high school bond uh, as uh, the non-high, they're not, they're the non-high district. And, um, and in the past, I feel like they always, they're, I, I believe that they always had in the past supported their, paid their fair share and supported and their their belief has always been to support the non high. Um, they pay their fair share for supporting the non high. Um, they just always needed to know what their fair share was, and um, and I think part of the problem was they never felt like they were given a good number of what their fair share was. Um, and so, um, that I think that's what, that's still what needs to happen. What is their fair share? Somebody needs to sit down and maybe that collaborator needs to be like the ESD sit down with the two districts and say, you know, here is the formula. Here's how we figure it out. And Patterson, this is your fair share. And I think that's where Mr. West and identified. once that's established, um, my belief they are a very land rich district. They are probably one of the most land rich districts in the state. And um, that that uh, they have a then a, a responsibility to go to their taxpayers and pass a bond or collect however they want to collect. If that not a bond, then however they want to collect those funds to pay their fair share to support the high school, their high school serving district, whether it be a bond or however their taxpayers want to support that. Um, but most generally that's through a bond. Um, their taxpayers in the Patterson School District pay very little maintenance operations taxes that I don't think they have any building taxes at all because <laughs> the construction taxes when we modernize the building for Patterson have been paid for for years ago um, so they're basically just paying whatever they're paying for um, their m &O taxes but I think they just need to know what is our fair share and um, and I've always found the, the people in that community have always been more than willing to support education. They just want to be dealt with fairly. So that's what I would recommend. Um, but um, you've said exactly what Mr. West said. Yeah. And it's, I think that's that's the bottom line. Yeah. And so but then if it's if it's my guess is it's probably more than 500,000, which I was kind of insulted when they came back and said, well, the most we're gonna pay you is 500,000. And then we've waited for two and a half years for that 500,000 to come in. You know, they, there's always been an excuse why they couldn't pay the, even the 500,000. Um, I think it's probably some number between 500,000 and a million dollars. But um, I still, th I'm, I still think they need to pay whatever that fair share is. And I would, 
I would like us not to settle for less than that, but I would like us not to expect them to pay more than that. And um, and I'd like to see us be able to put all of that money into, and and legally it has to all go into something that's going to be for, high school. for this high school campus. So tennis courts or whatever, but it has to go towards this high school campus. Mm -hmm. So let's just treat them, treat them fairly. That's all they've ever asked for, but treat them fairly. That's my hope. Which I think this is a great opportunity because we have the two projects and they do equally get right. close to what we could ask for. Yeah. And so um, we have, as long as we move on it and move fast, and I don't know if it'd be even reasonable to bring it back, have an agreement in place by the August 9th yeah. meeting, but if oh, we can, then- That was Mr. West and my plan. Yeah. Um, he, he had a meeting last night with this type of discussion. I wanted to have this discussion. Our plan is to speak on Friday morning and and draft the, the agreement. Yeah. And we may come to you. We he may he and I may say we need to write two agreements, and you guys, you know, the boards have to decide if they're taking this one or this one. But um, we just wanted to make it out in the public. Yeah. Both he and I are. He is not as new as me, but we're both newer in this, and the history happened before us, and so he and I had to start the conversation so we knew where everybody stood. So, so thank you for letting me talk. I love it. So I don't know if we get, I, I don't think you got any direction then other than finding. <laughs> I well, think it sounds to me like I, Mr. West and I need to come up with that number and we need to come up with what we think they can do. And we need to just see if we can put a bow on it and be done with it. And this is the number that we come up with. And then we decide how we're going to work with the money. Do you speak with that? I think so. I think I think the most important thing again is to have a track that's safe and a tennis court that's safe for our students to use. And if we can get the money to cover that, if we need to get a loan so that we have control of the project and we can get going on it and meet those deadlines. And then I think, you know, if I'm borrowing money, I want it all at once. If I'm <laughs> if I'm the bank, I'm gonna parcel it out a dollar, a dollar at a time. So I think I would suggest we get the most amount of money we can. We're already going to have the loan. If it needs to be payments, it could be a larger payment, you know, kind of bolster us or save interest. That would be great. But I would say, you know, if it's a possibility to get more and take the payments, that's what I would do. Can we put a little cushion in our pills that even after our vehicle loans paid off, we do still have some money there that we could make those payments with as well if there was an overage. And I would agree with Elisa. I think, I just don't know if we can hold out another another year uh for our kids so uh, one where yes so uh, the last time we had the discussion they were going to use bill money to pay us mm -hmm. and that was because it had to go to a capital project and at the time i don't know what time did your bill come in but at that point they were they had more than enough bill money coming in for a year to pay it for that they would they would have to still kind of take out a loan to pay us and then use their pills to pay back their own loans. So they might have to get a loan too. Hey, Amy, were we going to try to do one of the, the loans through the state? Where um, it's I'm, like 2% loan or something? So now I have to go find out what our options are. Um, I didn't know we were going to go that direction. So I'll look into it and we'll be able to provide uh, you with some good Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll get you some, some options. I don't know if it would qualify. I know the one that you're talking about, but I don't know if that um, qualifies for athletics athletic ground as well if that's for a building so i think i know what you're talking about yeah um, but let me look into it and take treasurer's what, office what our yeah what our options are okay. um i don't know if i need to bring that back for work well, let me find out let me okay it's my first time so let me find out and i'll bring it back to you um if we need to have a special board meeting is this something you would like us to call a special board meeting for so that we can keep things moving faster i'm working with that okay <clears throat> What just a quick question? I know we we talked. And I think is does it have to be on the pros the high school campus? Because I know the stadium's considered campus, but the far corner for the tennis court tennis court proposal is not on the high school campus. I didn't. I don't think it has to be on the campus. It just has to be for high school students. For high school students. Okay. You know. Yeah, their students, high school students, should have access. Yeah. Okay. Primary access. I just want to make a clarification. So, great.
Thank you. Any other questions? No. Any and the tilt question, I think the money comes in in November. I just remember having this discussion yeah. multiple times in the last half of the year. Yeah. So for an amount of how how much loan, you know, how large of a loan I should be asking for? Until we get the tennis court initial test, I don't know that I can even speak to that. I know we're talking 360 plus taxes and so forth for the track plus the tennis court, and we should know in the next few days. That, um, well, I guess he's got a kind of an idea about. I mean, oh. should I shoot high and ask yes. for a million, and then we only actually, you know, yes. Okay. I just don't want to delay it, and I need official numbers. Thank you. Great. I uh, think that was the most thorough and best discussion we've had on the oh, issue. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. With the most amount of information. <laughs> yes. Um, so moving on, policy 6113, lease capitalization threshold. Okay. This policy. one, I believe I emailed you and updated a copy. Um, this will come back to the board for first reading um, on August 9th. Uh, this is one that... Um, we did not have a, a policy in place last year, so we reported 100% of our leases that didn't meet, you know, the threshold we didn't have. So the state auditor's office says, you know, he, they recommended to have this policy in place. It just means, so like the, the copier lease that just got approved tonight, that's under the $400,000 um, threshold. So if the policy is approved, we wouldn't have to report that on our financial statements. It doesn't mean we're not paying the money. We're still getting to that. We just don't have to report it separately. Um, so it was a, it was just a suggestion from the state auditor's office. It's a new thing. So last year, 21-22 was the first year um, that GAP 87 was in place. And then this year is the first one that the software um, is in place. So the SBITA or whatever it is, that's the software portion. So this will come back. Um, it is a WASDA. I, I updated it on the WASDA model policy, um, and that's what will come back for the board. Um, I recommend the 400000 because it's an easy number. It's not quite one percent, but that will fluctuate based on our annual expenditures. But the um, the state auditor's office also recommended having a specific amount rather than a percentage because percentages do fluctuate, and it's easier for them to audit on an amount. So if you have a recommended different threshold, I'd be happy to incorporate that before I bring it back. You got any questions? No. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Question. Um. Moving on, policy 3530, fundraising act activities involving students. So this one has also been presented to the board a couple of times for discussion. Um, I plan to bring it back for an official first reading um, at the next board meeting. It's pretty simple. It just says that we will regulate fundraisers when they involve students. So when other organizations are coming into the building or are dealing with students, um, there are some parameters there. It's kind of low risk. The procedure is really what stopped the conversation, and I'll I'll bring that back as well just for for the conversational piece. But um, I think we've worked through some decisions on that. Any questions or suggestions on that one before I bring it back next time? Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Jackson's one. Sure. Next up is. Uh, Update on policy and procedure 4218 language access. So um, there were some changes in the law and requirements as far as access language for parents. Um, we're we're provi required to provide them communication in a language that they can understand, whether that's something in writing or that's orally. That's um, uh, so we're, we're required to have a language access plan. We're required to have a language access coordinator um and um they monitor and track and make sure that we're compliant with the requirements as far as language access for for parents and families um that person would be like be eric um that would be doing that and he we are also required to report to state what percentage of his time he that uses to monitor our language access and how parents are able to um, access all the important information that they need this is one of the um, reasons that we are going to implement parent square because it's that program i told you we can send we can a, parent, a teacher can send out this type of a message in english and it go when it goes out whatever language the parent cho chose i don't remember how many languages there I think are. there's 35 languages they, they, whatever language they choose it translates to that language for them the parent can respond in their own language and then we'll translate back to english for the teacher principal whomever sending that, out that information it also keeps track of 
all of the, like the percentage of how we're communicating, what that looks like, what parents are using that, uh, a different language, a language other than English. So this is, um, will be, a, is new, um, but it's how we've been trying to operate for many years. Um, it just formal, making it more formal. We are- uh, The key rough. piece that's difficult for districts in this is the tracking and the reporting. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, the idea behind partnering with a company such as Parent Square is everything is archived <clears throat> and counted and managed. So you, for example, you could get a report that says 322 emails were sent in English and they were received by 142 in Spanish and 16 in Mandarin and one in Russian. And there's your report. Instead of us having to literally right calculate. count and or whatever so to. starting starting the end of this coming school year we would literally have to do that um i mean we're a district that has the majority of our our needs are spanish we do uh, sometimes we have you know parents who speak mandarin we'll have a, pan, a few other languages when i was at the communication conference and we were listening there was a i was with a a lady who in her district has 102 languages so i don't want to say we have it easy but compared to that we kind of had, I mean, our challenges are much less than someone who's dealing with 100 languages. So one of the findings in a past district that I worked with, and finding, please don't think of it as a bad word, but a thing that was found is when you re go to our website, you can choose if it's in English or Spanish, right? But if you upload a document, it's a PDF. A PDF in a weird way is an image. It's not really. So if you upload a document in Word, our, our, our translating services do that for that other family. But if you upload um, a PDF document as, as an image, the, the translating service can't do that. So those are some idiosyncrasies that we have to work through um, to make sure that, and one of the things they look at when they're looking at our data is, is that one Mandarin fam speaking family able to have equal access to the 40% Hispanic or whatever, right? It, even though there's only one family, they deserve equal access as well. So this again also is just kind of the introduction to it. It'll have to come back for some second reading. Um, what's the committee? Well, can I speak on that? No, oh, I didn't know you were on there. Well, I was, oh, I was like voice the voice of above. <laughs> <laughs> So um, in a previous board meeting, like Deanna had said, it's during the summer, it's a little bit tough to get committee members to come in. Uh, right now, a lot of our families are in the, in the swing of, of working out for the season. And so we were coming to you as just a discussion item to let you know that we would like to move slow to go fast. So in a conversation I had with Ms. Casey, um, her and I discussed, and it would probably be more beneficial for us to continue a committee work in the fall so we could actually have a real robust committee that has parents who are more available, more readily available to be able to participate and we get an accurate um, reflection of our community. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Great, I appreciate that. Uh, that does it for discussion. Uh, moving on to reports. Start with you, Amy. All right. So um, our audit, our single audit and financial audit are complete. So we still have the accountability audit open, but the federal portion is complete. That report will be available publicly by Friday, and it's already in the clearinghouse, so that should show up um, as of Friday. We did end up, as I've mentioned multiple times, we did have one finding on the emergency connectivity fund. Um, we also had a management letter, uh, but overall, like, it really wasn't egregious. We did what we thought we were supposed to do, what we needed to do, but our documentation didn't align with that. So it's a new program. Um, so long story short, when we gave out devices, we should have asked the student, do you need this device? Do you have another device that meets the, the needs of the, you know, for your, for your learning needs? Um, and we didn't and document that. So we knew there was a need. We gave out the devices, but we didn't document it. And that's really kind of what it comes down to. 
Um, there was over 40, almost 50 other districts in the state of Washington that got a similar, the same finding. Um, whereas nationwide, it was tiny. There was maybe, I think, 10 nationwide. So Washington, it was an interpretation of the state auditor's office, but that's where we landed. Um, the accountability audit, like I mentioned, is still open and I'll give you um, a price of that as we know more. And then also once we um, all pulled the official audit files, once they're once they're launched in um, the clearinghouse, I'll download them and upload them to our website. So then anybody who would like to have access to them can see them at any time. But is, um, was the management letter related to the finding? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, so we're, my team's working on some data cleanup for the budget. You know, I gave you an initial view on that. We're getting the TK program built out um, and trying to see if we can trim back anywhere. Um, so that we can have a, a budget ready to go, a final version by August 9th. Um, for the study session, I'll give another presentation, any updates, and then the budget hearing for the 23-24 budget will be on August 23rd. Um, we will be having our surplus sale on August 8th. At that same time, we'll be putting out an advertisement for our vehicle and bus bids, so our sealed bids process. We haven't had any local agencies want those or, or reach out about those, so we'll be going out for public uh, sealed bids. Um, and then I have some additional policies that I would like to present on August 9th, but I didn't have a chance to put them in as a discussion. Is it okay if I just put them in the board and worst case scenario say no? No, I'll take it back. We're not ready for that. Um, but it would, would it be okay that I bring a couple of them forward just because of time frame? So I'm talking, so P card will come back, um, which you already knew about. I'd like to get the facilities um, policy updated. So I'll bring it back for first reading with anticipation that you might have some feedback for changes. Um, we've already talked about the lease threshold, the fundraising, and then there's also a Watson model policy on the inner fund loan. Since we are going to be using, potentially using that again next year, I would like to just get the policy in place to cover us. It's not mandatory, I just thought it would be good practice. Um, and then I have two resolutions that might bring in next year. So it will be another large agenda, but if that's okay, I would like. I'm good with that. Let's get it done. Yeah. Okay. All right, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Deanna. Uh, so we have talked a few different times about exploring balanced calendar. And just a reminder, balanced calendar is not year-round school. <laughs> Balance, the goal of a balanced calendar is to put some more frequent breaks in a school year, shorten the summer break to... Um, uh, minimize what they would call the summer melt or the learning loss that happens during that long, probably eight, eight, nine week break in the summer. Um, the research says six weeks is kind of that tipping point when you get past six, they remember until about six weeks. And then after that, they forget. So the grant just came out, I think just last week. Um, it's a $20,000 grant and, he, and we would have a year study. Kim and I are both interested in moving forward with that. I could easily write the grant. And, and I just wanted to make sure, we want to make sure the board was on, on, on at least with, and this is exploring it. Um, so we everybody could out there listening, we're exploring. not going to Portland. Um, we're exploring. Uh, just so for people to kind of understand um, what how a lot of dist districts, and there's a lot of different uh, ways districts do this, but they maybe start um, maybe a couple weeks earlier in August. Um, they might have um, extend some maybe three days. They might have a whole week at Thanksgiving. They a lot do a mid-winter break, maybe President's Week. They go out the whole week and, they, and extend it. And so then they would end a little later in June just to shorten that time the kids are out of school. But we also could spend all this time in studying it and go, okay, we don't want to do that. We're in the school calendar model that has been here for at least my 56 years of life. And I don't know about anybody else's life um, in here, uh, but it is, it's the old aggregating, you know, calendar. And um, it, for a lot of kids, it doesn't serve kids. And there are other needs kids have. You put them out for nine weeks with maybe not access to food and maybe mental health care and some of those different things. So and then, anyway. Um, I want to piggyback on that. So I was a part of a, a research group that worked with um, the state of Washington and the state of Michigan and that Michigan is a big proponent of balanced calendar. Um, one advantage that the processor has, even just when you start the looking is you're already a trimester school, um, which is a very um, easier, a lot easier transition than a semester school system. 
because you kind of have a third and then you can plan a break and some intervention time and then you plan it and then you have some break and it, it just naturally fits a little bit better. Um, and um, since we have a lot of adults in the room, it is also funny we talk about, um, you hear in your professions about work-life balance. Um, there's a work-life balance that comes into play. Teachers, uh, all professionals actually in education, work really diligent and then they have a chance to break and they can work very diligent. It also, um, families that are in split households um, find very pleasing um, things about that. Instead of the off parent seeing their child for six weeks in the summer, they have an opportunity to spend one or two weeks with their child every however many weeks. There's just some real community pieces that come into play when you look at it as holistically, not. So the things that everybody's understand, it's still 180 days of school. It, um, it It's not a major district. Uh, difference is the other things is you look at your agricultural patterns. Um, so we don't just uh, don't we don't disregard the world in which we live. And so, for example, I don't know if it's cherries or something, right? That we say, okay, that's really important. Or their asparagus season is important. Where do we build a break? Or what do we do? How do we wrap? So we don't. Um, in some communities, um, there's you know a big state fair or something, right? You try and do that so that you're limiting the amount of absences that you have as well. So there's lots of pieces in that. So if they, if we get the grant for 20 grand and it only costs us 10 to do it, do we get it's to keep ours. it, if we keep it no matter what, right? No. Well, it, it, it is and it isn't. I'm going to be very transparent and I'm public record here. I'll give you an example. So my little bitty district, Soap Lake, we got even more than that because we were in the first year of the investigation. And, um, so what we were able to do is when we held public meetings, um, we um, wanted to do it outside and bring everybody in. And so we bought a stage with part of it and it was all approved. So we do book studies, we do things with the community, we do um, parent meetings. And so we maybe need to do a parent meeting and we discuss multiple items and we discuss a balanced calendar to let the parents know. And that we do student activities and we do all kinds of things. So. We don't just get the money. You have to um, do stuff. reimburse. Do reimburse. Reimburse only. You have to spend it to get that. Yes, but I mean, there's so lots of flexibility that. inside the the way the grant is written. So if the board is comfortable, let's move forward that exploration. Then we would move forward with applying for the grant. I think so. Explore. Yeah. All righty. Um, oh, school nurse. I we had a a nurse applicant. Um, who decided to, at the last minute, basically, to withdraw. Um, I've reposted the position. We've made some changes to, um, if we ha I had a post initially. It's always been part of the teachers union. They have a, what's called an ESA educational, like a staff associate uh, um, certification, kind of like a teacher certification or a counselor would have. Um, and we they need to have their BA to, for that for that to be the case. So we've reposted it as an RN position with a, an hourly rate that I'll just say is higher than the other places that are paying an hourly rate in this area. Um, and um, with the option for me to use some grant money to fund their a year like through WGU to get their, their B, BSN. Um, as an incentive, um, I have reached out to an agency that provides a service and we, so uh, our hourly rate they posted, I think was 42.50, like $48 an hour um, with the addition of the education that the, to get a minimally experienced nurse is $78 an hour to $124 an hour through this agency. That being said, if we, app, if I can't find somebody, we're not gonna have an option. We have to have a nurse, um, but, People have to choose to be a school nurse because they want that lifestyle. You aren't that you aren't going to make the same amount of money you make as a nurse working year round in a hospital, working you know thirty six to forty hours a week and working in a year and a year and a year round schedule. So um, we're trying. We're trying to think outside of our box. But uh, so in, in the past, someone who was an RN, let maybe say, got that at YBC or CBC, but didn't have the BSN couldn't apply to be a school nurse. Um, some neighboring districts are using that model of, and 
So we, it's out there. So if you know somebody that wants to be a school nurse, likes that, that wants that lifestyle to work with student, you know, students. Has their RN, but doesn't have their four-year degree. Their they, yep. Yeah, we could, we would Partners. help support them. Yes. And they, so we're still looking for, for district nurses. We don't have one right now. Um, so that's kind of all I have to say about that right now. I literally check our application system probably twice a day, just hoping somebody shows up in there. Um, uh, the, uh, this morning, uh, Kim and I met with ESD123, reached out uh, with a grant called the Community Schools Grant, not to be confused with communities in schools, because <laughs> in education, we like to name everything the same thing, and um, but make it something different. Um, that being said, the Community Schools Grant is very similar to providing the services that communities and schools provide wraparound services, supporting families if they're struggling with housing, food security, those kinds of things. But the person would also be a prevention interventionist who can pro provide um, prevention intervention services for alcohol, drugs, also mental health supports. We currently have a prevention interventionist at the high school. We have no services for that at the middle school. This would be a middle school person. It would be seven years. And so five years are technically paid. We have to do $20,000 of, of match. We might do more than that because we're so expected to sustain it in year six and seven. So that $20,000 would go to basically kind of in a savings account to pay for that position down the road. Um, and I could fund that with lab. So I talked to Mr. Denny today. We did, they have to have a private office space. I, like I told them, he will get his shoehorn out and he will find a private office space um, because this is more services. But it does also speak to, we really need, we, you know, we took in a new, um, we have our, our new social worker who's amazing. Um, we have community and schools. You just approved a contract for um, our, our, AmeriCorps. our uh, AmeriCorps person that's working through United Way. We need to really need a very clear matrix and we need really good communication. So we're not doubling and tripling up with students and that the services are being distributed in a way where the students going down the path that they need for the service that they need, whether that be school counselor, whether that mental be, health. we also have comprehensive mental health. I mean, we have, a, we have, we are, we have a lot of services coming into our schools and we just need to make sure that we're getting those matched up and maximizing those services the most we can. So I think we're going to move forward with that. I'll notify the ESD tomorrow that we're on board um, with that. So we'll look forward, hopefully, and we won't know till December. So the grants due here in, in August. So that was an exciting opportunity. And what education it, do they need for that position? They have to have a, they have to have be, have a bachelor's degree and then some other, if they're doing prevention and intervention, there's some other certifications or training they have to have to do that work so uh, mental health again family wraparound services because as we know that student showing up to school if they're struggling there's some other things that might need support so I've you know we're we are building a lot of services for our kids we just have like it keeps coming and we don't say no which is great we just have to make sure that we're meeting everyone's needs um, and that we, people can differentiate between the differences between like, them so that um, a lot of times students and or families think, oh, it's about drugs and alcohol, so that doesn't pertain to me, or yeah. it's about, um, I, they need food, well, that doesn't pertain to me, or that's about housing. So we need them to really, like she said, a matrix that says, this is this title, and these are all the things, and this is this title, and these are all things for not only our staff, but our families, and, and the way in which we communicate, because like she says, it's community in schools or community schools well they don't differentiate the difference so no to, oh and they did tell us we didn't have to name it the the name of the grant we can change the name the name it's of the grant is one thing but how we publicize it, it can be whatever. a different name and the other thing is is like putting in like you know it's it's really it would be challenging for our administrators to manage that but they also need to know so perhaps that that funnel is uh, we have our school counselors we have team huddle on monday morning and these are the students we're staffing for the week, what we have in this case right now. There has to be a centralized kind of control over that so we know, because the same thing here at the high school, you know, we have our comprehensive, comprehensive comes up here. We have, you know, we have our counselors. We have just added another counselor. We have our, also our um, uh, social worker. And I, I will, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy because we are offering these services. Um, I am going to say that the care soulless so we had care solace. Um, I think it served somewhat of a purpose. 
uh, I have an agreement from them. It's not really expensive, but they don't technically provide a direct service. And when I look at their productivity report, um, they have they look like they have a bazillion times they communicate with people. They do communicate a lot, but through that whole contract resulted in two appointments for our students. Mm -hmm. So I really think that I, I depending on what report you look at, it looks better in some respects than others. Mm -hmm. And it is a service, but I think we're getting to the place where hopefully we would have the services in our schools. I, I don't know that even for $8,900, I'm not sure CareSoul has yeah. got us what we were really hoping for. So I'm thinking maybe I'm going to let that, I was going to bring it forward. I think I'll let that one go. Yeah. We are using it as our EAP right now for employees of two. So we, we are, get rid of it, we'd have to but we would still know, services. we would still know if they were accessing the service and yeah. we can look at that report. But again, there were about 20 cases in there. So I can see the cases. Um, I can't see staff. I can't see that. I, I probably could just see a number, but out of the student cases, there were two appointments and that's to me, not great. Mm -hmm. No. Um, so the sexual health committee met, we went through all of the, um, forms that came through to address each individual request comment. Some of those comments are, are just, it doesn't matter what we do. It's going to make no difference what we do to the curriculum because, um, uh, people don't, don't like it or don't support it. And again, just a reminder, all parents have the option of opting out of that, um, but there was some really good recommendations that came from my committee about a cover sheet, making people really understand that we're talking about one 30 minute lesson for a fifth graders, or for, it's not this weeks, weeks, weeks long curriculum of things. Um, so I would like to bring that, not only the lessons forward um, in a study session, but also the, the forms that people filled out. And then also there are some questions in some of those that we can answer and answer publicly. I was hoping to do that in at the August study session, but I do know that's also budget. I don't, I don't know if that's reasonable, but I know that we also need to have it resolved for school. So um, I know that it's, it's a unit that's taught late, the late, like very late in the trimester. So it could wait. I just don't know. In the past, when we were in budget time, that was kind of, what we were doing at that time. So if if we could do it um, as a, you know, I know our board meetings have been very full the last couple of months. I, what would, what's the board's preference as far as bringing that forward? I would say not with the budget meeting. I think yeah. the budget needs to be standalone almost. And I think we should expect that there could be community members that want to speak regarding the sex ed curriculum. Mm -hmm. So if we could do it the following meeting, but before, right, we need to have it done before school starts. I don't think we have to have it done before school starts just because I know even like you're talking about the trimester, like we for the fifth grade and the fourth, like that can all be taught towards the end of the year. It doesn't, it really doesn't matter for our trimesters and our health in health for the middle school and the high school. It does matter. Um, but the end of the trimester is November. So potentially could, we could, could do, do it, it in, in September. September. Okay. I, I think that might be better as opposed to, I think if it's the, I think the time and the space that it may require. Okay. Yeah, and I'm perfect. I'm, that's perfectly fine for me. The last thing that I I want to say is um, I want to comment on Kim's comment about our relationship. Um, we have we have a it's been a short short amount of time, but it, we I really appreciate how we are getting things done, and I have a partner in in helping getting things done. It's it's been really great, and I really appreciate her, and I'm I'm really thrilled with who you selected. So thank you. We'll, we'll see if she says that after this piece nah, of paper. Maybe not. <laughs> so um, um, last time I asked if it was okay to pass out a piece of paper. I didn't know if it had to go in a board report or not. So um, I was told that it doesn't have to go in as far as public, but this is what I'm talking from. So if you would like to have it, this is what I'm talking from. It's kind of like everybody else's notes, but if I don't, write it down, it gets pretty long. So I'm gonna go through it real quick. Um, just about a month in and all is well. Um, um, let's see, so I've met with now um, Michael Denny and Crystal Cole, we did that. I've met with Cindy Dean and Kevin Gilman. So we started, right, sorry. 
Um, so that's one been more. one more, or I passed one all the way over. I don't. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Yep. There we go. And then I'll give one to. Okay. Um, I just want to talk about some of the things I'm working on. I've met with the Prosser Thrive team. I don't know if you're aware of Thrive. It's a coalition that is done, um, run through Benton County. Um, some people um, talk them about drug and alcohol awareness and different campaigns they have become. You've seen sticker shock types of campaigns in the community. I met with them. I've met with um, Renee um, uh, talking about Booster Club Music Booster Shining Star projects. I had a meeting with Chief uh, Dameron at the fire department, got a tour. We talked about what's going on. We talked about the um, courtyard at Heights and some different things are going on. So just really working on that. I've been at Rotary. I'll be presenting at Rotary on August 3rd. We met with the Benton County Treasurer team. We talked about our investments. Um, we met with the City of Prosser Administrator and Parks and Rec, really working on relationships inside the community. Um, under the legal realm, we've been, I've resolved the one public concern. We're working on a couple grievances, a couple legal issues that I stepped into, um, and we're working on the agreement with the Patterson School District. Um, we're in the world of communication, you know, that's a big part for me. The Pulse of Prosser is um, going on. I got a great feedback from the teachers union today. Um, and it makes perfect sense. And it was kind of one of those things as you learn processes and procedures when you're getting started, um, the staff should always get things first. And this particular Monday, it was sitting in my outbox. I'm busy having meetings, doing whatever. It got put on social media before the staff got it. And so we, Selena and I solved that today. We put something on our calendar. We have a check and balance and we'll make sure that our staff always gets it first. So those are the kinds of things that you learn when you're starting a process. I'm excited to announce that we're going to do an ice cream social on August 17th at 6 p.m. at the high school. It's a meet and greet. I'll do my little presentation about who I am as an individual, how you reach me, so on and so forth. Um, it'll go, we're doing a flyer for the Rotary, the Chamber, the website, the newspaper, and social media, trying to get people to come out and do. This will be part of my campaign on working on getting a levy campaign put together and speaking out in that regard. The district opener is on August 21st. Um, we'd love for you to come, but if there's three of you are coming or more, I need to plan for just a special meeting so that you can all be there. So um, you'll hear an email from Selena or myself, and we just need to know if you're coming or not so we know we can plan a special meeting. Um, it's at 8 o'clock. We'll, um, any employee that's not under contract that day or already paid, we're offering to pay them two hours so that we everybody can come. It'll be a light continental breakfast, we call it muffin, fruit, juice, coffee, that type of thing. Eight o'clock, it'll start. We'll have a vendor fair there for our um, anything like AFLAC, American Fidelity, um, employee fair. That, um, Insurance. In, and, yeah, yeah, all of that kind of stuff. 403B. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. All local vendors. Yeah. Yeah. The local vendors. I'm trying to work on that, working on relationship. It sounds kind of funny, and no, I'm not giving away cars, but I, I have a vision in my head of the Oprah Winfrey giveaway day. Everybody's a little bit of rah-rah, a little bit of excitement, um, that kind of thing. Um, so that's what's opening. Facilities. Um, Andy did most of that that's on this list, so I'm not going to go over that. We kind of tag-teamed that already. Um, I do think that we do need to, to really understand that the old high school is a work in progress, we're slowly moving people out, moving things around. It's not something that's going to be done like that. Moving our staff out of the, what I call the old Prosser Falls. That's just how I know the building, but whatever that, the district office and moving that. Um, Selena's working hard on that. We're working on some pieces. Um, we are committed to, like I said, moving, emptying the storage units and those kinds of things. Um, we're in the fiscal side of things. We're working, um, we started with this. Uh, negotiation with the teachers group. We're still working on the ESPP group. We're getting there. Um, I want to talk publicly about recruiting the business manager. Um, we have three leads on interim business managers. Um, I actually have some stuff on them, but three leads, and they've been retired anywhere from six months to a year and a half, who could come in and, and work and pick up the work and then talk about working with either a search firm or something to do this. Um, 
the it's on the WASBO website. It's on the state auditor's office now. We're putting it on. Um, I've reached out to every single ESD superintendent um, from Spokane to Seattle. We've got this topic going on, and, and I think we finally started to get some movement. So I'm Good. hoping that we can get something there. We talked about construction. And then finally, I want to talk about my growth goals. At our last meeting at the study session, we talked about growth goals. Um, before I actually write the terminology, I would like to have some thoughts. Um, I'd like to focus one on budget, and it will have something to do with um, properly allocating um, funds to the proper locations and increasing the reserve. And then I, it'll have something to do with a percentage, a number, and maybe some categorical work that we're doing. Um, choice transfer and enrollment. Um, is a the next big one a public meeting talking about why are we seeing the transfers out what can we do to bring them back um, some pieces like that so when you write a goal you want something that's measurable while um, I don't know that you can change a parent's mind who's had their student at, at district x for five years to bring them back but maybe we could look at somebody who's only been gone for one year or to it decrease the number of choice transfers that are leaving, right? So last year there was X number that's leaving. Can we just decrease that number this year by a certain percentage? So those are my thoughts on that. And then obviously in communication, you know how I feel about that. It's coming already, but also working through the levy piece of the communication. Is there anything else that you would like me to pay special attention to before I write those for you for next week or the next school board meeting? Is there anything that you've thought of that you wish that I would do? Or if you think about it, if you could send me an email, I know that we can't have a quorum in our emails, but if you could send me something you're thinking about, I could adjust that accordingly. Or if I three of you send me the same thing, then we might have a fourth goal or something like that. But, but this is the focus of the three that I planned. I think it's great. And these these are different goals than the. Um, these are the ones that are part of my evaluation. Okay, thank you. And I I know we talked last week. If you guys had any specifics to get them, well, send them to me or whatever, and we can kind yep. of work on yep. them uh, for evaluation purposes. So. Yep. You still got some more time. Mm -hmm. And that's all I have. <laughs> thank you. All right. Moving on to board reports, Peggy? No, I don't think I have anything. Anthony? No. Lisa? I'll be short. I thought it was great to watch the playground equipment unloaded from the trailer while I was at my daughter's swim lesson. So it was a nice little view and it's all stacked up and ready to go at Riverview. I don't know if it's at heights I haven't driven by, but I'm sure it'll be just as exciting when that happens. Is it? It's not there? I, I drove by today and it wasn't. Well, my guess is they're not going to have it there sitting there maybe with no i think it's all in one location yeah. and the oh. installation installation and people it, take it. it i don't know that they just for it to be safe and uh, i think it's all in yeah. i i heights is getting new play now you make me a little well. bit nervous so now i'm going to have to go get on the phone meeting. you missed that meeting <laughs> No, I, I do think it all arrived in from one piece. Thank you. So I, you mentioned that. That yeah. yeah. So I will do a little research though, because now my I have a little pitter potter going on. So I better check that. I will end there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have anything. I know Kevin uh, Gilman presented uh, at our last meeting about the window film, and I just don't want to lose it. You know, I want to make sure that still stays, you know, at the uh, at least a, a conversation piece so um with that we will conclude reports uh and we will recess into executive session uh pursuant to rcw 4231101d with no action to follow to follow and this is to review negotiations on the performance of publicly bid contracts when public knowledge regarding such considerations would cause a likelihood of increased costs. And under RCW 4230.110.1, I with no action to follow. This is to discuss with legal counsel representing the agency matters relating to agency enforcement actions or to discuss with legal counsel representing the, agent, the agency litigation or potential litigation to which the agency, the governing body, or a member acting in an official capacity is or likely to become 
A party when public knowledge regarding the discussion is like to be likely to result in an adverse legal or financial consequences to the agency. And they got a shortness. I want you to take a break. Uh, I've still got another half a paragraph to read. Sorry. Um, this, yeah, this subsection one I does not permit a governing body to hold an executive session solely because an attorney representing the agency to, is present for the purpose of this subsection one I. Potential litigation means matters protected by RPC 1.6 RCW 560602A concerning. One, litigation has been specifically threatened to which the agency, the governing body, or a member acting as an official capacity is or likely to become a party to litigation that the agency reasonably believes may be commenced by or against the agency, the governing body, or a member acting in official capacity, or three, litigation or re legal risks of a proposed action or current practice that it, the agency has identified when public discussion of a litigation or legal risk is likely to result in an adverse legal or financial consequence to the agency. How long? <laughs> oh, um, remember time? Yes. Um, well, we'll recess for five minutes to take a break. And, and no more than 30 minutes. So we'll start at 8.12 to conclude at 8.42. Yeah, write that down. <laughs>